there, there was a table um, kind of at my dorm that, that had a bunch of books sitting on it. In general, I see this book as something that's very oppressive. Um, women, people of color, both didn't have rights under this document. Um, this same document allows for hate speech against people, which is just very hurtful. Um, it allows for anybody to own a gun. Do you, do you think that uh, having a conversation with them and, and telling them that you know this, uh, this document was kind of triggered a student, do you think that's something that they would take into consideration and, and um, try to get rid of from that area? I do. Hi, Angela. This is Carly Leitch calling from the Office for Institutional Equity and Diversity. I just wanted to let you know that I got in contact with Veronica Cooley, who's the Assistant Director of Northeast Campus. Um, she assured me that she would talk um, to the RAs and the Community Director about making sure that there's no longer any constitutions in the entryway of Barry Hall, making sure that there's no longer any constitutions in the entryway of Barry Hall. I saw this and I was very like deeply offended by it and felt almost harassed and discriminated by the Constitution and I I don't want others who also I'm sure as a woman you can like you can understand why something who says that we don't have rights because of our gender is so discriminating and hurtful. At North Carolina State in Raleigh, we wondered if they would actually ban the Constitution from parts of the campus if we told them it really bothered our journalist. When I, I saw this just being freely handed out, you know, at a residence hall for, you know, really anybody to see, not by their choice, I, I could not believe it. And is it more that it was in the dorm, which is kind of a living safe space? Would you have felt the same way if it had been in Tally or in an academic building? Where well, I've, I've been thinking about it and I, I understand maybe how, you know, it, it's going to be in some classes and, you know, the library. Mm -hmm. But, you know, those are places where students kind of have a warning of what's they're going to be seeing, but when, you know, discriminating things are just out in the open, where, yeah, and residence halls are in places where students, you know, don't choose to see it, um, I thought that was a problem. I came here for, for help and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe being able to create to remove it from a place where students find kind of as their safe place. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that this office or you are, that's where I can find help in that? That's uh, something I would definitely, I'm trying to think who in um, housing that we could discuss that with um, to see. Do you, do you think that uh, having a conversation with them and, and telling them that you know, this, uh, this document was kind of triggered a student. Do you think that's something that they would take into consideration and, and um, try to get rid of from that area? I do. Um, especially, I would say, it's, you know, it being such a trigger um, for you in there, if there's not a reason for it to be there, that I don't see a reason why we couldn't get rid of the Constitution from residence hall. I, I came here for, you know, help in trying to um, make it so I wouldn't have to see it unexpectedly mm -hmm. again and 
that, and so that's kind of why I came here. So. And that's, I, I will definitely take the next step there in contacting housing and seeing what we can do to accommodate that, um, just to make sure that doesn't, because we, we never want students in situations where they're having reactions that make the environment feel hostile for them. Then we asked if she would be willing to shred the Constitution to make us feel better. She said she wanted to keep it for now to make sure everyone knew what it was they wanted banned. I was just like, I'd like to keep it for the moment just to make sure I have, you know, the clear thing. But I also want to make sure that I can clearly tell them what document it was and where it came from to make sure that they know um, to make sure that it's not coming in to the residence hall again. The very next day, we got this voicemail. Hi, Angela. This is Carly Weich calling from the Office for Institutional Equity and Diversity. I just wanted to let you know that I got in contact with Veronica Cooley, who's the Assistant Director of Northeast Campus. Um, she assured me that she would talk um, to the RAs and the Community Director about making sure that there's no longer any constitutions in the entryway of Barry Hall. In this investigation, we have shown that many college administrators have lost their ability to be reasonable and intelligent because they are bending over backwards just to be politically correct and sensitive to student needs. Thankfully, there are some places of higher education that still believe in freedom of speech and rational thought. So this is a copy of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. Yeah. In terms of uh, the document itself, um, well, I have to say that we are, uh, as an academic institution, mm -hmm. we are committed to principles of freedom of expression. And... Um, Even when it's offensive? I can tell you that under our policies, mere um, offensiveness isn't enough by itself to create a violation of our policies or of, of um, any federal law. Even though there's not a policy now that could, you know, prevent this from being handed out, is there anything I can do to make sure that I don't, that I don't see this on campus again? I really doubt that because, again, it is part of, we do believe in uh, academic freedom here, and this is part of yeah. it, to try and make clear that having a copy of this document, no matter how strongly it might affect you, wouldn't be, just having this available on campus wouldn't be a violation of our policies. Okay. I don't know if I can take it. Up to you. Um, this might seem kind of silly, but, um, is it okay if we just kind of like get rid of it as kind of like therapy or something? Well, you're free to do that. Like together? Um, I like can keep it. Maybe we could like I, I, shred it or I, cut it up. Again, I think that because it is a document that is part of our government's history, I'm a little uncomfortable um, shredding it. I can, I can keep it and dispose of it later if you'd like. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. Okay. Well, we can look at the policy and what the definition of harassment is. Um, I can tell you that um, we are not going to be able to ban distribution of the Constitution on the campus for several reasons. Mm -hmm. Even, and, and I know it's, you can't ban it from classrooms or the mm -hmm. library, but... Mm -hmm. Is there a way that it could be, you know, prohibited from being passed out on campus? No. Do you think that maybe we could just as like therapy or something, like just like get rid of it, like shred it or cut it up? Just if I see that it's destroyed, that might give me, you know, a little bit of peace of mind, you know, help me sleep at night. And yeah. If that's not something that we're going to do here. I would encourage you to go, you know, whatever. Th I'm not a therapist, but whatever you know, is helpful for you with a trained professional, I would encourage you to, to bring that to that venue. Okay. You don't think that it's a good idea to do, to kind of just... That's not something that we're going to do in this office, yeah. 
But 25 miles away at North Carolina State, Carly Weish told our journalist to come back in a day or two and she'd be happy to shred the U.S. Constitution. I'd be happy to return it to you to make sure or for you to come by my office and then we'll put it through the shutter and hopefully that will help and we should be able to do that within the next couple of days. Okay. She assured me that she would talk um, to the RAs and the community director about making sure that there's no longer any constitutions in the entryway of Barry Hall. 